Okay, I am ready when you are. Hey, so I'm Erin. Hey, Erin. Hi, everyone. I'm Maddie. <laughs> and we're actually just um, transiting back from Johnson & Toll to Honolulu. Yeah, uh, yeah, probably about 400 nautical miles or so from Honolulu right now. Uh, yeah, and heading back after 20 plus days out in the Pacific. That's right. We're just coming back from the Johnston Atoll unit. It's one of the most remote regions in the entire planet. And it's actually the work that we've just been doing is going to be used to inform our next ROV dive. Yeah, that's right. So um, we have been focusing on seafloor mapping um, and we are seafloor mapping for a lot of reasons. But one of the primary reasons is so that we are ready on the next expedition to get those ROVs in the water as quickly as possible. Absolutely. And many of the targets that we've actually um, d dove on on this in these last three weeks are those that we are probably going to bring the ROVs in. And, and Aaron, you have best, the best eyes on those, right? Uh, well, me and the entire mapping team, um, because they've all been staring at them a lot every day and helping to build up these coverage maps and, and yeah, really get us ready to go so that they can hit the ground running. Should we take a look at the data and, yeah. and get a better idea? Let's take a look. So. Um, we're looking at data in Planar Mouse, which is a software we like to use for visualizing our ocean mapping data. Um, and I'm kind of starting here in Oahu. And I'm just going to zoom out to say that as our base maps, we do have what looks like a map of the ocean, but this is just satellite altimetry, which you might have heard us talk about before. And that's just an estimate of what the seafloor looks like. And sometimes it's pretty good and sometimes it's not great at all. So we, uh, we try to do some mapping to improve that situation. So this is just the kind of generic overview, but I'm going to bring us in and show our data now. So I'll turn on our coverage from our mapping. And you can see we started mapping, if we're looking at the bright line there, we started mapping just off of Oahu. As soon as we're on areas where there's no coverage by high resolution systems, um, we turn on our sonars and we try to build up our data set, both for where we're planning to work, like Johnston, which is here, but also in international waters and in around Hawaii as well. So always constantly trying to help build this continuous map of the seafloor because the data really is so sparse and any little bit that we can contribute does help the, the bigger picture and the, the global map of the seafloor. So I'll zoom us in, um, and bring us into 3D so we could take a look at this. So we spent about three days transiting from Honolulu to the Johnson units of the Pacific Remote Islands National Monument. And uh, so the circle that we're looking at here is the Johnson Atoll EEZ, and it's also the limits of the monument too, so that they coincide with each other. And that is 200 nautical miles from Johnson Atoll at the center. Um, so quite a really large area that's covered by this national monument. We came in, um, I'll, I'll do north oriented first just to give us some perspective. So that's about oriented to the north. We came in on the lower southern east, eastern side of the, the uh, atoll on the southern side. And we did that very specifically. So the mapping was planned um, by Lindsay, who is our mapping coordinator. Uh, he planned this transit and then had us coming over here specifically so that as we transited over to our main mapping area, we can get coverage on many of the, the possible targets for NA-141. So let's, let's zoom in and take a look. Um, so we, we came in. Uh, this seamount here uh, was is not a target for that expedition, but we went over it because it looked fun. <laughs> we, <laughs> we always try to hit anything that looks interesting. And if I just turn off the coverage, um, this is what it looks like when there's no coverage. So this is the satellite altimetry data. It's very smooth, um, doesn't show you any features. It gives us an indication that there's something there. But then when we actually uh, go over it with our sonar, we start to get really nice detail. And we can see this is a, a, a guillot or a flat top seamount that we passed over. We continued along and mapped our way along the edge of the EZ. And one of the first seamounts we encountered was this one, um, which is target three for NA-141. And though I can't split it out now, on our first pass, we only got to go over this once. So there was just one kind of pass over the top of it. And we all kind of got the feeling that we wanted to come back because it was such a really large seamount. It's, uh, it's massive. We still didn't even finish it. Um, we did as much as we could when we came back to hit it on our way out. Um, but you can see there's still quite quite a bit of potential seamount to go. We got um, pretty nice top of it. 
And if I turn off the satellite altimetry so you can see it really clearly, um, just some really nice detail on that Target 3 seamount. It's really such a difference, isn't it? <laughs> oh, it's, yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah. I mean, sometimes you could be like, eh, you know, with smaller features, did it really add much? Um, it adds a lot, right? A lot of detail. And the kind of detail that the scientists want to be able to plan their dives. Um, they like to target ridges, typically, um, and the features with a, a lot of um, topographic difference um, so that things can hold on to it. So this kind of map will let them make their dive plans much more easily without a lot of guessing. <laughs> it's a better <laughs> indication. So after target three, um, we continued up and hit this target, which is number two. Um, I will now turn on a little bit of background bathymetry. So the reason it looks like there is a gap in the top of that one is because this seamount was partially mapped already. Um, so that was the data that did exist, and I believe that was a Nautilus pass, um, which is pretty cool. We did that a few years ago. Um, but we wanted to try and get the sides of it as well in preparation for dive planning. So if I turn our coverage back on and turn that one off, you can see we got nearly complete coverage on that seamount number two, and so totally ready for the next expedition. Continuing on, uh, we passed over target six, another pretty cool seamount. And if I turn on the base map for that one, let's turn on the GMRT. Again, completely unmapped, nothing there to see, just a gentle bump in the satellite altimetry, but with the multi-beam sonar, getting really nice detail, the multiple kind of star-shaped ridges that you get on some of these seamounts, and just really, really great detail. We continued up, and all of this took, um, this kind of gentle move to our main area, it took a couple of days. Um, we just kind of progressed over there. This is a huge area, and that's part of the thing that, um, part of what people may not understand how gigantic these areas are. We would, some of these lines, we'd be driving in one direction for 10 hours or, <laughs> or 15 hours without any change in direction. And all of that was still happening within the monument. I just think that's amazing. Right, and when we say seamount, we're really saying underwater mountain, right? Yes, I mean, exactly. These are huge features. <laughs> huge, huge features. Yeah, these are rising 4,000, 3,000 meters. Um, off the off the seafloor and just yeah, gigantic, um, just like a mountain that you picture if you're driving around Hawaii or anywhere else. Um, so continuing on, um, cross over the ridge. Um, this is Target Seven, uh, another potential seamount that they were thinking of diving on. And continuing on, and you know, always catching little bits every now and then. So here we didn't have enough time to spend time here, but you can see even in the, the lower interest areas, we always have our sonar because there's no data there and there's always some interesting little bit that tells you a little bit more of the story about what's happening on the seafloor. Then continuing on, um, got up here, and this was later, but um, we spent actually quite a few days just doing some gap filling mapping. So in addition to working towards uh, NA141 goals of hitting these targets, we are also tasked by our, our partners and sponsors at the NOAA Office of Exploration to fill in gaps in coverage, right? And so there was um, a pretty massive gap here. If I turn off the coverage, um, people had nicely mapped the seamounts. Um, actually, this group of seamounts were mapped by John Smith, who's on the ship with us on this expedition. Um, he did those on the Falcor, but there was all this kind of area around it that was not mapped. So we took the time to go and fill that in. And there was a lot of flat, <laughs> if we remember, <laughs> yeah. it's a long time ago, but we had a few days of some really flat abyssal plain kind of terrain. But then we got some nice surprises, like these little features here. I turn on the, off the GMRT. Um, these cool little kind of small, but still pretty massive bumps on the seafloor. Um, and it added some additional coverage to the seamounts um, as well. So always, always building up that coverage and, and filling any gap where we can. This was a, to get us up over a gap, as was this. From there, we went, I don't know, to, oh, one more seamount. We'll talk about that one. <laughs> this is... Which target is it? I can't read it. That is target 10. So another potential seamount um, that is planned for NA141. And then on to my favorite, um, this ridge feature. So this was, uh, this was pretty cool um, from a geologic perspective and also of interest for NA141. And what's interesting about 
this, well, uh, the orientation is interesting. For one, it's kind of more east-west oriented. It doesn't have that strict seamount feature. It's more like a ridge, as I said. Um, but just, I don't know, just some really cool bathymetry of just looks like the seafloor being pulled apart. Um, just really liked it. But more technically, what was important about this? Um, the geologic team was interested, the scientists coming on the next cruise were really interested to dive on this, but were unsure if any of it was actually within ROV dive range. So the limitation for ROV Hercules is 4,000 meters. And when we were planning on where we might dive and then where we might map, we could estimate where 4,000 meter was. Uh, 4,000 meters was using the GMRT or the, that background map that I showed you. And this is, it's, they're not draped, but showing us kind of the overview perspective of what showed up as being above 4,000 meters. And based on the satellite altimetry, this was going to be the only place, this tiny little spot was the only place that would be within dive depths for ROV Hercules. Um, and then there was one little spot up there too. Um, and that's just kind of perspective that's throwing it off. But it was kind of maybe the very tippy top of this. So by going and doing the diving, if I turn those off, you can see um, by the red contour, this is now the actual 4,000 meter contour on our multi-beam data. And you can see there's actually quite a bit of potential here for a more extended dive. And it will allow the scientists, to, if they choose to come here, to um, get samples of rocks and things to help them really maybe nail down why this feature is like it is, um, how it fits into the geologic history. Uh, and that was that was my most exciting seafloor feature <laughs> on this trip. <laughs> I just think it's the the coolest. Uh, so we call that the the ridge feature. And um, you can see uh, both for dive 11 and dive 12, some potential um, to to actually get a dive in, which we're pretty excited about. And then uh, we finished that up, and then we started moving back south. Um, so moving back down over um, any seamounts that we crossed on the way, we added additional coverage and then went way back down and finished pretty much anything we could. So I think that's kind of the overview of what we did. Um, you'll see these spaces, these uh, numbers floating here, they are also potential dives, but either they were covered already. So you can see dive number 13 and dive number 14, we had really good bathymetry on already. Um, and then there were other potential dives up north, but we decided to not worry about trying to map these, um, leave those alone and really focus on the, what they are calling the primary dives, which are down here in the south. Awesome. And one thing that, you know, is really sort of unique about this current expedition that we're on is everything, all of the data that we've collected, all of this mapping information is informing the very next cruise. So we're sort of laying the foundation, right, for, yeah. for what the next team is going to go in and get eyes on the seafloor.